Christ. All right, let's let's begin today's session. Um, we'll just do a brief overview and introduction of uh, the subject uh, uh, Christian history and missions. So we're going to look at revivals, right? And uh, what is revival? I'm sure we all have been praying, right? We pray, Lord, revive our city. We want revival in our land. We want revival in our nation, uh, in the nations. And we also pray, Lord, revive us. Uh, revival starts within us. And uh, revival basically means bringing something back to life, right? Uh, uh, something that is dead, bringing it back to life. Now, uh, we're going to be mo focusing more towards the church and how the church uh, needs revival. Uh, and, and when we look at the scriptures, God comes in different ways, in unusual ways, and he makes his presence known in different places, right? In different ways. Uh, so uh, sometimes it, it's the power of God that brings conviction. Sometimes it brings healing. Sometimes it's deliverance. Sometimes it's just uh, uh, the overwhelming presence of God. And so uh, we don't have to categorize like saying, okay, this is a visitation, this is a move, uh, or uh, this is just the Holy Spirit, you know, moving around. No, uh, the move of God results in great uh, missions and evangelizing and fulfilling of the Great Commission, right? Um, now, let's just look at church history, right? Uh, very simple uh, Understanding church history. Uh, now, we're not going to look at all the aspects of church history, but we're going to look at what is it that we can learn. And even as we pray for revivals, even as we pray for a move of God, what inspiration we can take, what insights we can learn, what lessons we can learn from the past, right? Um, what we can learn from church history about revivals, visitations, and move, moves of God. What does it take to get a revival, right? So it's not like uh, we know that, right? Uh, revival is not, it does not happen overnight, right? It happens over a series of probably months or years of praying and seeking the Lord. And uh, uh, so we need to be patient. Uh, and we also see, what is a genuine sign of God, a genuine move of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, now, there are times when, you know, when we look at church history, there were, uh, there were certain people who came and they said, okay, this is God, you know, that is ministering to me. And this is the, you know, move of God. But it wasn't. It was just their own, uh, you know, emotional senses being stirred up. Uh, and, and also we can see on how to steward a revival, right? Uh, 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 how the visitation, when a move of God, a visitation of God comes into our midst, how do we steward it? How do we look at it, right? How do we take care of it, right? So there's a lot of things uh, uh, on these lines that we will be studying. Um, firstly, let's look at why do we have to study, uh, you know, revivals, and moves of God. Why, why can't we just study other subjects and, uh, you know, New Testament, Old Testament and be happy with them? Right. The reason that we are studying this is because we want to pursue and press for revival. Right. Uh, even as we look at what's happening around us uh, with the pandemic that is, you know, it's coming, it's going, uh, you know, we're seeing cases come and increase and then again it's decreasing. So it's very uncertain. And so I believe that there's all across the body of Christ has been praying and seeking and pursuing God for a revival in our nation, right? Uh, our quest is not just some, you know, uh, uh, an excitement, it's not about, okay, uh, let's get, you know, uh, not uh, making your, you know, your, you know your, your senses happy, but it's about a work, a genuine work of the Holy Spirit uh, amongst us, right? So let's look at a few points, right? First one, the reason we are studying this is because we want more of Jesus, right? Uh, our, our quest is simply 
so that when we read all of this, when we study this, we'll say, God, I want more of them. I want more of this or more of you because if you worked in the past in this way, you are able to work even now. You, If you worked in the revivals and the moves of God in, in the uh, early years, you are able to do it even now. Right. So our quest is simply for more of God. Right. Uh, God being expressed in and through us, uh, both personally and as a body of Christ. Right. Now, most of us are here. Many of us may already been in ministry or you're already working in the ministry. Now, uh, here's an important thing. It's not only about, OK, how is my ministry doing or um, uh, is there revival? Is there a move of God happening in, happening in the ministry? Is God working in the ministry? It's not only that, but it's also the personal aspect. Right? Uh, I think yesterday in the uh, uh, initial uh, orientation, we, we saw that you know it's not only about the ministry, but it's also about your personal life. Uh, it's about asking God for more of him in our lives. Right. Um, everyone with me. I, I know I'm talking a uh, lot. So uh, if you have questions, you can always put it up on the chat uh, and we can take those questions, too. Uh, so. God himself, you know, he made himself available for us. Right. He promised that he will be with us. His 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 Holy Spirit moves among us. Right. Um, there's always more that we can experience, right? So, for example, uh, you know, the, the Bible teaches us, Jesus says, I've blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Uh, so it does not mean that we don't go back to God and say, okay, God, uh, anyway, you've blessed me with every spiritual blessing. So uh, it's not that, right? It's, it's a desire, an increasing desire for more of him, right? So we should never come to that place where saying that, okay, I can prophesy. I can maybe, you know, pray for the sick or, uh, you know, uh, uh, I have the gift of healing and deliverance or I can speak in tongues. So I think this should do. Uh, we should never come to that place. Right. Um, when we look at some of the uh, men and women of church history, they were filled with a, a zeal, a passion that, you know, they wanted more of Jesus. Right. Uh, so there's always more we can experience. Right? Uh, all, all of us are experiencing something in our lives. You know, the Holy Spirit may be teaching us or uh, uh, ministering to us. But remember that there's always more that we can experience. Right. Uh, but here's the thing. We have to desire it. And we have to go after it. We have to say, God, I desire more of you. I desire the, the, the move of the Holy Spirit, a revival to start within me that can impact the people around me. Right? Uh, I'm sure all of us have heard of this. Uh, uh, you know, we are just a drop in the ocean. Right? Uh, sometimes we look at, you know, uh, all the things that we study and Okay, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, eschatology, Hermine, all these other, you know, so much of theological studies we can do. Uh, but here's the thing. If the theological studies is not backed up with the power of the Holy Spirit, then it just becomes knowledge. It does not become a revelation, right? So, so when we study, when we you know, get into the word and uh, it should be backed up with this desire that, God, I want to do something more for you, a desire for more of our Lord Jesus in our lives. And uh, that is the first reason why we are studying this. Right? I'm sure all the other subjects also, we, we want to learn, we want more of Jesus. Uh, but in, in this whole quest of looking back into history uh, and looking at how God worked in people's lives. Our desire must be, God, I want what you did for them. And we can pray that because remember, it's the same Holy Spirit that is working in each of us. Amen. Right. So we have a rich spiritual inheritance. Right. Uh, uh, you know, maybe some of us have felt that, you know, uh, 
we're praying for revival we are praying for the move of god a visitation of god but god nothing is happening uh it's been 5 years that we are praying or the church is praying it's been maybe 10 years that we are praying uh, remember that uh, as you are praying as we are doing this pursuing revival there is an inner cleansing that is happening within us as well right uh, i just uh, we'll study about this later as well but i want to give you this example there was uh, everyone know uh the great man john wesley uh who who did wonderful things uh, uh in church history he and his brother charles wesley uh you know they shook the whole of america england as well uh and you know uh john wesley did a great ministry more than 40000 sermons preached went on his horseback uh to different places and preached the gospel in power now what happened was uh you know john john wesley uh, this is just just history but john wesley was uh you know unwell he, he was advancing in his age and uh and this young man named uh jonathan edwards uh, uh he wanted to meet john wesley and know about his ministry so uh somehow he got in contact with uh, john wesley and he was in a sick bed uh, so john uh, jonathan edwards went and he uh went by the side of john wesley every day and john wesley would tell him the great ministries the difficulties the challenges uh, that he went through in the ministry but the lives touched and how his ministry has impacted uh, so many people and you know jonathan edwards was just wanting to write a book about him but what happened during that whole encounter was you know jonathan edwards was probably about 25 years old he he as he was writing these stories uh, the holy spirit began to revive him the holy spirit began to you know just uh, put this desire intense desire that i have to do something like what john wesley did Uh, and he did so uh, when we read church history he uh, after he finished up uh, with his writing material he got on his horseback he went preaching to uh, in in in, uh, in 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 many 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 places and he did a great ministry 25 unfortunately when he was 28 he was diagnosed with tuberculosis 29 he passed away but in those few years he did a wonderful work of god and so this is just a small example of how when we study and when we read about all of this our desire is it's not like we want to be like this person but we want to be like jesus um you know we are not saying that they you know uh, church history everyone were perfect we all of them made their, they had their shares of mistakes but uh, we take what is good and we learn from them second point i just put the point here first one was more of him second point is christ likeness okay uh before i go ahead any any question anything any thought that you want to share or uh, should i go ahead any thought or should we go ahead okay okay so the second second aspect is christ likeness what is christ likeness uh yeah uh charles we are in page we're still on page 1 we are on the uh our quest in page 1 so what is christ likeness uh individually collectively to walk the the way jesus walked in his ministry right uh we always say that no uh uh be christ like paul writes in his letters and says be christ like uh display the attributes of christ the attitude the your character your uh, your uh, walk in holiness walk in uh, uh, uh you know uh, in power and all of that uh, now the reason we are studying this again is to be christ like right when you say god i want to be more like you but not only in when people are watching me but also when no one is around that i have walk 
Christ in Christ like attitude. There's something interesting here uh, that I want to just touch upon uh, in Christ like attitude. Um, firstly, is your character. Our character is very important. Uh, you know, character is is who we are when nobody's watching us, right? Now, uh, we may be in ministry. Like I'm not saying any of us. I'm just giving an example, right? Uh, and we're doing the ministry, but somewhere along the line, when people are watching, we behave in one way. And when people are not watching, we behave in another way, right? Uh, and it's, it's not Christ-like. Right, uh, our desire is as we learn all of this that our character, our attitudes, are to be Christ-like. And uh, as we grow in the ministry, opportunities may come our way. It is important to walk in holiness, to walk in humility. So that is something that we have to desire. As we desire God, there's a practical aspect as well, right? Uh, uh, and also, as we study later on, we'll see that many of the, uh, you know, the great men of God, women of God, because of this issue, right, uh, because of the whole attribute of Christ likeness, character, um, uh, many of them have had, you know, fallen, many of them had lost their way. Of course, God's grace was upon them. But because it was their own personal um, prejudices that caused, you know, the revival, the move of God to be dampened, right? Uh, so it's very important. Uh, for example, if God is calling you to start a church um, or you're already pastoring a church or pastoring a ministry, uh, the ministry is growing. The more the ministry grows, the more we are to be Christ-like, right? It should, it should not be the other way around. It should not be that, okay, the ministry grows and then uh, the attitude or the character grows. No. The more the ministry grows, the more we, uh, humble, us, we humble ourselves to God and we say, God, I want to be more like you. And so that is our quest. Third one is so that God revives us again. So uh, look at a scripture here. Psalms 85 and verse 6. Psalms 85 and verse 6. Can any, any any one of us just read that? Psalms 85 and 6. Anyone? Yes, Pastor Andy. Go ahead. Empty. Psalm 85 verse 6 says, Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Amen. Amen. Right? Will you not revive us again? Now, this was probably in a time when, you know, uh, if we look at Old Testament, uh, I, most of us uh, will be studying Old Testament, I guess, this semester. Uh, if you look at Old Testament, uh, if you look at what happened in Jerusalem early uh, years, uh, you know, God used the Jews. He brought them out of Egypt uh, and the Jews uh, brought them to the promised land. They were they built the temple. But somewhere along the line, that spark, you know, uh, if you if you read the book of Deuteronomy, it's so wonderful. It's so powerful because it says, you remember that God brought you out of Egypt. You remember that he parted the seas into two. You remember that manna came down from heaven. And so he's, Moses, as he's writing this, he's telling the people, remember that. Don't forget what God took you through. Now, why is he writing this whole letter, the whole book of Deuteronomy? Because somewhere along the line, the Israelites lost their way. I'm sure we've heard of that famous saying, right? Uh, uh, God brought Israel out of Egypt, but uh, to get Egypt out of the Israelites was a difficult task. Uh, why? Because it, it's true. That's a true saying. It's not just a fancy line, but it's a true saying because somewhere they had lost that zeal. They had lost that passion uh, and that uh, that understanding of God, who is a holy God, right? Uh uh, and then uh, later on, somewhere, you know, David came in, he restored some things, put some things into place. Then God sent prophet after prophet after prophet. Uh, 
Why? Because that whole zeal, they had gone away from God. Right? If you uh, if you read the book of Ezra, it's, it's a wonderful book. Ezra was a scribe. And uh, let's read Ezra chapter 9, verse 8 and 9. Ezra chapter 9, verse 8 and 9. Can one of us please read it? Uh, yes, Pastor. Go ahead. Uh, Ezra chapter 9, verse 8 and 9. And now for a little bit while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage, but he extended mercy to us in sight of the kings of Persia to revive us. To repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. Right. Thank you, Christopher. So, if we see this, uh, what's happening is we know the walls of Jerusalem have come down, the Babylonians have destroyed it. Now, all of a sudden, God uses Nehemiah and Ezra to pray to that this whole the the walls be revived and the generation meaning the people of israel be restored back to god what happened here the walls are broken uh, nobody is bothered about it uh, everyone are happy okay babylon i'm working here i'm doing what i have to do uh, but somewhere they, you know they've lost that desire hey I, th this is my land this is our god's temple and now, because it's our God's temple, I, I, it is ours. That that whole feeling of, you know, it is ours had gone. So God used Ezra and Nehemiah, and we know the story. The uh, uh, the walls was rebuilt, and God not only rebuilt the walls, but there was a revival among the people. Uh, if we see, read later on, as Ezra began to open the scrolls and read, the people cried out to God. They fell on their knees and said, God, forgive us, forgive us, restore us, restore our land, repair us. Uh, we have gone away from you. There was a whole turning away from sins and looking back to God. Right? The, similarly, the, uh, as we study this, we as believers, you know, there may be some things in our lives that needs to be restored, some things in our life that needs to be repaired, some things in our life that needs to be raised up, right? Uh, uh, and we want to experience a revival in that area so we can pray. And, and even as we study this, uh, may the Holy Spirit minister to us in the areas that uh, we may be struggling in. Now, it's important to understand that, you know, all of us as believers make mistakes. We go through our challenges, right? Uh, uh, and so it's important that we open our hearts to God and say, God, this is my challenge. This is my uh, difficulty that I'm facing. You revive me in this area, right? Uh, then let's look at the next one. There will be seasons of a revival, right? Acts 3, 19. Acts 3 and verse 19. Could one of them, please, one of us, please read it, please? Acts Repent therefore David. and be converted. Repent therefore and be converted. That our sins may be brought out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Manohar. Uh, so, repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and times of refreshing. Right. So when God sends you know his holy spirit there are seasons of revival that he may take us through right uh, now we all know about seasons right god works in seasons right uh, uh, we may be going through a difficult season some of them uh, you know uh, god may be teaching us we may be going through a, uh, a season where okay everything's all right everything's going okay uh, but spiritually as well we go through different kinds of seasons. Right? Uh, I remember many years ago, um, I was going through this season where, you know, 
I wanted to preach, right? I wanted to share the word. I wanted to preach, but I was not getting any opportunity. Uh, you know, I was just, uh, you know, I was doing other things, but I wanted to teach. I wanted to preach. I wanted to, uh, you know, do the learn the word of God. Um, it was a it was an intense desire, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I knew that I had to study the word of God for me to preach, right? So. Uh, that whole season of wanting to preach, wanting to preach, that desire, it moved away. And a season of just sitting, studying the word of God came in, right? Uh, many seasons, right? It could be studying the word of God, it would be a season of prayer, or, uh, you know, uh, even now the whole season of uh, Bible college, this whole semester, this semester for each of us as students and even as a teacher, uh, it's a, it's a season of revival, right? We go back to this, and even as I prepare and I go back through all of this, uh, we look back and say, God, yes, we need this. We need a move of God. Revive me in this area. Uh, so God takes us through these seasons where the outpouring of God's presence is upon people, right? So uh, I remember there was a season somewhere in 2016 where as a church, we were focusing on worship. Right, praise and worship. So, uh, uh, I very clearly remember that uh, you know every location. We have five locations in Bangalore. Uh, every location, the worship was so powerful, right? That we didn't want to stop the worship. You know, it used to go on for one hour, one and a half hours at times at certain Sundays, and we just couldn't help it because it was it was a season of revival in 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 the place of praise and worship, right? Uh, every location, almost every Sunday, it, you know, usually the worship is about 40 minutes and then we get into the announcements and the word. Uh, but but it was a, a, a season right, where every week worship would go on. So there were times, a, a few times when, you know, after the church service, we would stay back and, you know, continue with worship. Then we would have this whole nights of worship, uh, full night of worship. So, uh, so it was a season. There will be probably seasons where... God may take you and I through prayer, fasting and prayer, right? Uh, so through all of these seasons, remember that God is teaching us, right? There are different levels of his power that is manifesting and operating in and through our lives, right? Uh, now, sometimes it may seem like there is no power Right, uh, in the sense that uh, you know we may have finished a worship session, right, and uh, or or a preaching session. You say, "Oh, it was so dry. I mean, I didn't feel anything. Uh, uh, I I didn't feel the move of God." Here's the thing: it's it's not only about feeling, right? Now, just because we didn't feel it doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is not beginning His work of, you know. Uh, visiting and outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Remember, uh, in the book of Acts, right? There was, uh, when Peter went up to preach, uh, where 3,000 people uh, gave their lives to, uh, uh, to Jesus and they accepted the gospel, there was no, there was no like, you know, uh, shaking and a big sound and thunder and all of it. If, if you read Acts, uh, it, was, it was a very, very simple message, right? That Peter preached. He said, okay, this is what it is. The Jesus that you have killed, you have put on the cross, he is the Messiah, but God in his power raised him up. And so he's alive now and he's working. Multitudes accepted that message. Why? It was a simple message. Why? Because it was the move of God in that place. Right? Uh, God's grace was upon that place. I remember times when, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure it may have happened to those who are ministering, uh, those here who have also, who are also ministering, where, you know, I finished a whole set of worship in the church, but I felt I did so, you know, uh, I prepared, prepared everything spiritually, prepared, practiced well, but I felt that after the whole set, I felt that, oh God, I didn't experience anything. 
oh god i feel i feel that i could have done better or i feel that okay this song should have come here we have all these thoughts but remember that it's not about our feeling it is mostly when you know you feel that we've not done well it is somebody in the church will say you know i received healing or i, re I was blessed with this or uh, i was blessed with this song and we'll be like really uh you were blessed with this song so uh you know so so seasons of revival happens uh in the manifestation the outpouring of god the visitation of god happens in seasons so we take it as it comes uh any questions before we go ahead any thoughts you want to share uh, from what we have done till now feel free if you have any thoughts you can you can share uh, if not we can just keep going ahead everyone with me Yes, yeah. Okay. Pastor, we are yes, with you. Pastor. Okay. Okay. Yes, great. Pastor. Great. 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 Okay. So now we may use different terms for the work of God, right? Uh, and I'm sure we all have used this revival, um, awakening, refreshing, renewal, visitation, and outpouring, um, a release of the Holy Spirit, a move of God. You know, we. Uh, you know, usually when we uh, remember, I shared about the praise and worship times. Uh, usually, when we are during that season, when we begin to worship, there was a heavy presence of God. So we knew that it was it was a, a, a move of God. God is doing something, and uh, there were times when you know when we were just you know in worship, and people would receive healing. People receive. Nobody prayed for them. Nobody no place the hands on them nothing people receive deliverance right so there are different words that we can use but uh, remember that the words are not important you know the terms are not important right of course it is important when you're you know studying it when you're talking to others but regardless of what terminology or what um, language we use the quest is to desire more of his presence right uh, so for example we're telling somebody hey you know what uh, i went for this prayer there was a sudden move of god god began to work uh the question that we should ask ourselves is okay god did all of this are we uh, has it brought us closer to god has it made us christ-like has it brought us to a season where we will pursue god more these are the questions we need to ask ourselves, right? Seasons of revival lift us to new realms, right? Let me put that. Seasons of revival lift us to new realms. Now, all of us, right? Uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He says this in many places, right? Uh, be spiritually matured. He says, uh, uh, don't be always on milk, but eat the food. Uh, uh, and, and so basically what he's saying is mature in Christ, right? The end of a season that God is doing signals the beginning of a new season, right? So for example, Right. I'm using these examples, right, so that we may all understand. Example, you're part of your church, and in your church, they're doing 40 days of fasting and prayer, right? Now, it's a season. 40 days, you're just praying, you're seeking God. Uh, God is ministering to you and maybe to using you to minister to others. Um, and then when the 40 days is over, what do we do? We have a good meal, okay? But here's the thing. When that season is over, remember, a new season is starting. And what is that new season? God is, whatever the what happened in these 40 days, we are to get into this new season of saying, God, you have used me in these 40 days. You have spoken to me. You've ministered to me. Now, I want to go from here, from, a, from this place. I want to step up. 
in my life in the ministry if i've been praying half an hour every day i want to make it one hour every day if i've been reading the word uh, uh, half an hour every day i want to step it up i want to go to a higher realm a new realm um if i've been you know uh, if this is something that i've been praying for uh, uh so uh, for example you know you you've been wanting to flow in the gifts of the spirit uh, and so you can say god i want i want this i want this in this new season uh, so our spiritual journey is where we move from glory to glory right you with me everyone right so so just because bible college is over this i'm just using this example just because this semester's over uh, you know yes we can relax we can enjoy the holidays all of that uh, but it should be that okay god i've i've completed my uh, you know first year i've got into the second year uh, now let me get into this new realm a new level of spiritual maturity a season of revival exper- helps us experience new levels of his glory right uh, so most of us right uh, we want new levels right uh, none of us want to stay in the same place all of us want new levels uh, uh, of his presence in us and uh, if we uh, are doing our spiritual journey correctly living continuously ongoing um, and pursuing god we will get into that place of maturity growing from glory to glory step by step right uh, one of the mistakes that uh, a lot of young people uh, make is you know um, they they've seen uh, you know pastors and leaders their lifestyles probably and they say uh, oh i want to be a evangelist i want to be a pastor um this happened where a few students in our church uh, i'm not putting them down but uh, i had to explain to them uh, you know they said i want to become a pastor i said why do you want to become a pastor uh, i said no so that i can uh, you know uh, preach the word every sunday uh, so it, it looks nice right but there's a lot of things involved there's a lot of preparation so i i told this person this young boy i said that's great uh, but there's preparation involved god wants you to uh, step up from the position you're in what you're doing now to a higher position i told him so if you want to be a pastor uh, you're 22 years old now come the church starts at 10 o'clock come at 9:30 begin to set up the chairs and he was like okay uh, you know uh, i want to preach pastor i don't want to set up the chairs I said yeah come set up the chairs why because there are seasons uh, now i'm not saying that setting up chairs will bring revival it's not about that god will take us through that process of revival that process of you know uh, continual growth and maturity right uh, and, and so sometimes we as people we forget to receive uh, what Uh, when i mean forget we fail to receive what god wants us to do in a visitation and later on we'll also look at even some of the most matured believers and ministers of god in church history in the early 1700s 1900s as well they made such simple mistakes uh, you know this whole example of john and charles wesley they had a small misunderstanding they went in two separate ways so so you know uh, there are things that uh, you know uh, cause divisions so that is why maturity is very important uh, and so these new realms that god takes us through is very important so uh, let's just quickly do a review of what we did today uh, so firstly we the reason we are studying this is so that we have more of him to that we become christ like not only in our personal lives but also uh, as a church we be pers- uh, we become christ like that god revives us right uh, maybe some areas in our life are dead and dried up we can pray and say god 
revive us during this season. God takes us through seasons of revival, right? Uh, so be available for every season that God has, that he wants to take you and I through. Uh, seasons of revival lift us to new realms, which means he wants us uh, not to stay in the same place, but to step it up, to go one step higher, right? And we all uh, have to grow, right, uh, in the Lord. Uh, the moment we feel that we are in a place of, you know, just stagnant in one place, uh, we need to buckle up and say, okay, God, I need to, you know, go up to the next level. I need to prepare. Now, uh, uh, I just want to point out one very important thing. Even as we pray for revival and all of this, uh, yes, there's a spiritual aspect, but it's, there's also the practical aspect, right? The spiritual aspect is God will pour out his Holy Spirit. God will do a move of his Holy Spirit in the way he wants to do, right? The practical aspect is we have to pray, right? Now, we have to seek God. Now, if we don't, you know, the, do the practical, the spiritual will not happen, right? Uh, so it's very important that you do both together. Right. Imagine if uh, in Acts chapter four, if Peter, uh, you know, uh, saw all the thousands of people and imagine he didn't he didn't preach the gospel that time. He said, OK, anyways, I've done my part here. Let me let's just go and do something else. No, he did the practical. That was to stand up, to preach the gospel and, you know, to, to deliver the message. That was a practical thing. And God moved uh, and did wonders there. So. Uh, so I want to just encourage all of us, even as we uh, pick up from next week, we'll pick up and look at different things in, you know, we'll journey through the book of Acts uh, and look at how, you know, there was revivals in the book of Acts. Then we look at also, you know, people in church history. Uh, many, many people are there. Many revivals that happen, moves of God that happen. Just there are some revivals that went on for years there are some that went on for a uh, couple of weeks and uh, some that just died off immediately so we we will learn and we will learn from those and god can help us uh, to really desire revivals a move of god in our lives right R rupa you want to share something go ahead rupa yes sir thank you sir good morning good morning friends uh during this past uh, season, COVID season, there was a uh, rumor going on. I don't know if it is a fact or rumor that the third wave will be affecting the children. So our fellowship members, uh, we all prayed and we had a one night prayer for the children, praying for their protection, not only physical uh, and also spiritual salvation and all. So after that, God gave me a, he spoke to me and said, start a worship. According to the Psalms 8, uh, Lord says he will build a fortress on the praises of the children. So based on that verse, we started for the past two months. Every morning, 7 to 8, I have invited uh, our children in the church to meet on Zoom. So I thought they will not be very interested. But they started coming so enthusiastically. Every day they prepare a praise. Uh, they learn the memory verse and they pray for not only for themselves, for different children. And this praise and worship has really changed not only their lives, but the lives. Each family, I can see the revival in that family. And I praise God. I I feel so humbled in the way God has moved in their lives because all those children were attending uh, online classes. They were not at all play, paying attention. They started cheating in their exams, in these online uh, exams. I was so troubled in my heart. But through this, God has changed their hearts. And I really want to thank God and praise him for the thought he has given me and also given the children 
that commitment and uh, for meeting every day even before i switch on the zoom uh, as soon as i switch on they are all there coming and it's a great joy to see them thank you sir i just wanted to share it thank you thank you thank you rupa for sharing yeah, that's a you know an important point as well you know uh, that uh, a revival a move of god can happen with just even two or three people so being faithful even in the small that god has calling each one of us to like how god told uh, sir rupa to start uh, a worship uh, so start small and god begins to work with those small things and uh, so we will wrap up today's class we'll just close with a word of prayer and then we will pick up from next monday onwards let's just pray before we close father we want to thank you uh for what we learned lord we thank you that uh we as your children can desire uh, a move of god the the work of your holy spirit a, a revival not only uh you know, in ourselves but also in our city in our nation and the nations of god you are able to do it of god uh like what we studied lord even as we uh, pursue uh, for a move and, and the revivals and as we go on to study this lord i pray that there will be a move in our own hearts lord that we will go more christ likeness lord that we will go through seasons the seasons that you take us through that we will learn and grow and uh continue to fulfill the call of god in our lives thank you that you have given us this wonderful opportunity lord we give you all the praise we pray your blessing upon each and every student to god in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you so much everyone have a wonderful week god bless you all thank you thank, thank you boss